Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Today on the big program, we're going to talk leadership, employee engagement, diversity, and a lot more with Dawn Kirk. She is the author of the Heartbeat Leadership book, as well as a book called The Success Blueprint. Dawn spent over 26 years with Frito-Lay Pepsi, then also spent time at Coca-Cola, leading teams of up to 5,000 people. I can't imagine that. Uh, yes, we are going to corner her on the Pepsi versus Coke question. That's the important hard-hitting news of the day, so stay tuned for that. Don was also recently named one of Georgia's 100 most powerful and influential women, so a lot to learn from her today. We're also going to talk a little bit about a couple of book-related events I'd love for you to put on your calendar. We have entered the official countdown, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand hits the shelves in 21 days, three weeks from today. So all of that and more coming up on Digging Deeper. I had a lot of questions and excitement last week about the new white paper I wrote with the team at Get.Store. The .Store top level domain is your key to unlocking new e-commerce and merchandising power. All of the reasons why are spelled out in more detail in the white paper called The Power of Your Brand for Merchandising. In it, I spell out the case for the, the use of new top level domains like .Store uh, instead of or as a supplement to .com and other more traditional domains. Why is that? Well, new top level domains ignite possibility. Where uh, can you buy Emirates Airlines merchandise? At Emirates.Store. Just a logical domain extension there. What about collectible figures of YouTube superstar PewDiePie? Why at PewDiePie.store, of course. So take your brand, add .store to the name, and you have a simple, easy to remember, direct access to promote your drive and to promote or drive sales. Uh, domain URLs today are often the first thing that people think of when they think of your brand. So why not make sure you have a logical URL extension to get people to your store? Uh, you can do so best with a dot .store domain name. Now, the get.store team has two things for you today. First, you can download the white paper, The Power of Your Brand for Merchandising, written by me by going to jason.online. There's another new top level domain for you, jason.online slash power. Uh, it, it is free. Just give them your name and email address. So they can send you the PDF, learn about the power of your brand for merchandising. Then you can go to get.store and get your own dot store domain name uh, by using the code JasonWP. You get it for just a buck 99. They normally run for $29. So JasonWP is the code at get.store to get a $1.99 domain name to get your merchandising for your brand started. So the white paper is at jason.online Jason .online slash power. The domain name uh, can be purchased at get.store and use Jason WP, which is short for Jason white paper, by the way. Uh, Jason WP when you check out and get that. Unlock the power of your brand for merchandising with get.store today. If you're dialing into the live broadcast on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can jump in the comments section there or hit at reply to the video on Twitter to ask questions and interact with us here on the show. Jump in the comments and say hello and ask your question. I'll do a quick check over there to see. Uh, the two normal culprits are already there saying good morning. Izzy House is in the house on LinkedIn. Good morning, Izzy. And Chip Griffin is here today as well. So good morning, Chip. Great to see all of you. If you are watching along and want to jump in the comments there just to say hello, please do. I'll be more than happy to uh, try to say hello to you as we move along here. And if you have a question during our conversation with Dawn, please uh, chime in there for with that. And I will try to surface that as we have that discussion here on the big program. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to the show. All right. Uh, enough of the formalities. I want to get to uh, the meat of the reason you're here. Don Kirk is one of the 100 most powerful women in Georgia. That state has not been in the news lately, has it? Uh, she's also been inducted into the VIP Woman of the Year Circle by the National Association of Professional Women. She's an expert on leadership, management, employee engagement, and beyond, and is with us today. And if I hit the right buttons, she'll come on the show. How about that? Uh, good morning, Dawn. How are you? And welcome to the program. Good morning. I am great this morning. Good to see you as well. I'm 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 glad to have you here. And we have to get to the nitty gritty first off. Uh -oh. uh, you you <laughs> might be one of the few people to hold executive leadership positions at both PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. So which cola would we find in the Kirk household? Coca-Cola. Ah. 
<laughs> you're you're an Atlanta gal, so that kind of that yeah, makes a lot of sense. To exactly, me. exactly. Well, it, just so you know, if I had a uh, a share for every Diet Pepsi I've had in my life, I'd own the company, okay. uh, and and I'd have a good chunk of Coca Cola too. Uh, but Diet Pepsi is my drink of choice. Uh, you you led their sales channels for a bit. Is there any way you can hook me up with a fountain for my house? For uh, what? For Coca Cola? No, for Pepsi. <laughs> uh, no, nope, I don't have any connections there. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because when people hear the word PepsiCo, they automatically think I worked on the Pepsi side. But I actually worked on the Frito Lay side, which was the the snack division. So well, I mentioned so probably some chips. I was going to say, so I'm, I'm going to blame you for all this. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> so I'd like to start off uh, the, the more serious discussion here by putting some framework around leadership in a big organization. Mm -hmm. You manage teams of thousands of people. I struggle with the three people on my team now, not that they're the problem, I'm the problem, but <laughs> what are the fundamentals you have to have as a leader and manager to just wrap your head around leading a team of hundreds or thousands of people? Yeah, so great question. So this might sound a little counterintuitive, but the first thing I'd say is that you've got to be able to lead yourself well, right? Before you can lead, you know, thousands of people well. And so I always talk about that leadership starts with yourself in terms of growing and developing and, and making sure you're equipped um, to lead others. But beyond that, in terms of you know, leading tons of people, it's really, it's really systematic in a way as well. Not only do you have to be in tune with just people in general, but you have to have a system and a process that you can replicate day to day so that you keep the right amount of focus on people and the right amount of focus of driving results, you know, through those people. Now, I know you have a philosophy and a coaching program uh, around best you for life, where you coach executives on how to do this. Take us through that at a high level a bit and help us understand how your guidance helps leaders produce, you know, best in class execution. Yeah. So great question. So a lot of that I talk about in my book as well. So I, I use a framework called the six P's or called the six pulses, playing off the analogy of the heart. But, you know, the first place we start is really with priorities. Because as you know, in a business, there's fast pace, it's ever changing. The number one challenge is a lot of times is getting very clear on what the priorities are. And so the clearer you are with your priorities, the better you can communicate with your team what those priorities are and everybody can be moving and rowing in the same direction so that you achieve those results um, that you're looking for. Um, secondly, we talk a lot about preparation. So what's the, what's the gap between the priorities that you are seeking and the results that you're getting. And depending upon what that gap is, is going to require some type of preparation, whether that's capability building of the team, whether that's resource allocation, whether that's getting the right people on the team. There's a variety of things that can happen in that gap between what you want and what you're getting. And then, of course, we talk about people in general. So let's assume you have all the right people in the right seats, or maybe you don't, a full assessment of each person on your team. And where are they in terms of strengths, opportunities? Where do you see them going in the future or where do they want to go in the future? And how do you help them get there? So on, on that last note, though, mm -hmm. I wonder the, the question kind of popped into my head as you were saying that how much of leadership at that level is knowing the business and focusing on it versus knowing people and just motivating them to drive the business? Yeah. So that is a great question. And, and I usually answer that with and and both. <laughs> so you have to know both. Um, and now, the higher up you go, my philosophy and my belief is the more in tune with helping drive results through other people that needs to happen. But at the end of the day, you're you're responsible for knowing both. You have to know the business well enough so you can direct and guide and coach and give feedback to the teams. But at the same time, if you're not getting the results, you've got to be able to coach and give the right feedback, understand how to get the right people on the team if they're not performing, how to help people get to the next level. So I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily 50-50, but there is a huge uh, amount that you have to balance them both. And sometimes you're more driving results. Sometimes you're really people focused. You have to be able to ebb and flow based on what's going on. Where do you think company executives and leadership lose a step these days? When you when you spot an organization with a problem, what are the most common problems that arise? So, again, I go back to priorities. Um, just, again, in the quest for delivering results. And, of course, that's why we're all in business is to get the bottom line, right? Drive top line, save costs, and drive profits. So I think a lot of times it's just that laser focus on results 
sometimes only can cause people to falter. And a, a lot of the issues can be really underlining on the people side of the business as well. All right. And so let me, fine. yeah. So, so let me reframe the perspective a little bit here. Let, let's say I'm a middle manager or, mm -hmm. or even an executional employee in my company. Mm -hmm. The CEO comes out with a new definition of our core values, gives a big rah, rah speech to get us all excited about being our best. Uh, but they do that once a year. And then we all go back to our nine to five and we grind it out. What can someone in that situation do to help the company uh, improve or help their own situation improve so that they can uh, invest in that a little bit more? Yeah. So um, I'd say number one is every person in the organization, after you hear this big rah-rah in the direction of the company, has to really say, okay, based on where I sit in the organization, how do I connect the work that I'm doing to the mission, vision, and all the things that I just heard. How do I make that connection? Because it may be way up here and I'm down here in the organization. So how do I do that? So I think it's getting really clear on what role you play, how important is that role, and how does it connect to the bottom line results of the organization? And sometimes it's hard for people to see that connection and how their work impacts the broader organization. And I think that's one of the primary responsibilities of the leader is to be able to take those high level strategies and, and visions and make them real for them and their team so that it delivers on the right results. Reminder to everyone uh, out there watching or listening, you can jump in the comment section and ask a question of Don here on the show. So please jump in and do that. Don, I wonder how much of a company's leadership is the responsibility of the employees? I mean, talking heads can talk, but the 5,000 people have to walk for it to work. Absolutely. There's definitely a shared responsibility. And you'll, you know, you'll hear me say, anybody that talks to me on a frequent basis will say, you know, you have to own it as well. It's not just the company's responsibility to develop you. It's not just the company's responsibility to, you know, make sure they're the best leader. There is a shared um, responsibility in doing so. And I would say in, in, in many instances, as an employee, you need to initiate it as well. So I talk to employees a lot that say, well, I'm not being developed and, you know, my leader's not doing this and my leader's not doing that. And I say, like, okay, that's fine. And it, it, you know, but what's your responsibility in this? Like there's too many resources available these days to, to rest on or be a victim of maybe a bad leader, you know, go out and get it for yourself. Um, have the right conversation with your leader and initiate it to get what you need when you need it. So, so heartbeat environment resources. Right. So heartbeat leadership is your book. I assume mm -hmm. it follows this same line of thought. Tell us a little bit about the book and who it's for. Yep. So the, the book at the end of the day, again, it's called Heartbeat Leadership, Empower Yourself, Engage Your Team and Impact Your Organization. And so that subtitle is important because the, the, the fundamental definition of leadership is influence. And sometimes when you're talking to people like, oh, that doesn't apply to me because I'm not a leader. I don't have a team. But again, leadership starts with you and it's all about your ability to influence others. So I wrote the book primarily out of the number one question I continue to get through my career is how do you keep this right level of focus on people and continue to drive results? Don't you kind of have to trade one off for the other? Like if I'm driving hard for results, don't I kind of can't do all the things that I would normally do with people on coaching and feedback and developing. And if I'm focusing on doing that with the people, don't I lose traction on the results? So I really wrote the book to talk about how you balance and integrate those two focuses to drive optimum results. Um, and this book is for you know leaders and organizations. It's for folks aspiring to be great leaders and organizations um, so that they can optimize their results in the businesses that they're in. Excellent. I, you know, I'd be uh, remiss in this conversation if I didn't ask you about leadership in the context of the times we're living in. I mean, obviously, there's been a diabolical shift yeah. in how we do business with COVID and having to adjust to non-traditional work settings and logistics. Many companies have had to redefine how they drive revenue. Um, how much they can drive, how they market their products or communicate with their stakeholders. That's an overwhelming set of circumstances. What have your coaching and consulting clients offered up as their biggest challenges in all this? And how are you advising them to handle them? Yeah, well, some of the biggest challenges is obviously that many of our of the employees are now not in the office anymore, right? So you're not being able to touch and see them and sit in your traditional meetings to ensure that what you're talking about is be really being received the way that you want them to. So a lot of the biggest challenges is engagement 
engagement and how do you make sure that your messaging around the priorities and the messaging around what needs to be done is really being received um, the way that you think it is. And the, and the best way that I've coached my clients to do that is that you have to raise the level of touch points with your employee base. You know, whereas you're used to being able to pass them in the hallway or what have you, you have to find those other unique ways to connect with them, not only just collectively as a total team, but the individual touch points have to be stepped up as well. Um, so, you know, really working with your leaders to ensure that they have a process and system in the place to really do that. And let's face it, there's a lot going on at home with our employees as well, right? They're managing kids online and digital in school. You've got, you know, two adults trying to share all the bandwidth of the internet. I mean, just a lot going on in the home as well. So we really need to be checking on the well-being of our employees as well as a delicate balance for this drive for continued revenue and the shifts of how we have to get business done. Yeah, it's, it's so again, really. I was just, as you say, it's amazing to me. From this heart perspective of being sensitive. Nice. I was just going to say, it's amazing to me that um, that business can shut down because uh, four teenagers decided to play Call of Duty down the block. That always bothers me. <laughs> but, um, exactly. Well, and let's add to that then the issue of social and racial justice and injustice. For um, I think that's uh, an important context here too. Lots of companies have stepped into visible and vocal roles in social issues that they maybe didn't before. Uh, 2020 came along. Um, I think in many cases, company leadership has referred back to their core values and asked the question of, you know, what would do right by our customers. But I also think many companies feel like they maybe have been forced to take stands they weren't really comfortable taking. Not that they're necessarily, you know, racist companies or anything like that, but they just don't feel like being involved in right. social or political issues is appropriate for a brand. And some brands have been conspicuously quiet in all this for similar reasons, I would imagine. Have we entered a new era in our history where every brand had better be uh, a socially in tuned brand, at least aligning itself with social issues or they risk hurting themselves? Or is there room for those that don't wish to cross that line? I, I personally believe that in this day and era that you cannot avoid the conversation and that you need to figure out how to communicate um, through your brand, what your position is or what that you're at least aware, you know, so it's probably delicate in terms of, you know, standing one side or the other so strongly, but to not say anything um, still communicate something. And I think what many consumers will assume if you say nothing is that you don't care. And so I think it's important as brands that you at least demonstrate empathy, um, that you demonstrate that it's important because the, the bottom line is you have employees that you have working for you that this matters tremendously. Secondly, you have consumers that this matters to significantly. So I think at the end of the day, if you don't choose to engage that, I think long term, it will hurt your brand. So what advice would you give to people or entire companies who, uh, especially, I guess, the perspective of entire companies who want to do better in terms of uh, being in tune with social issues, maybe even want to just do better in terms of diversity and representation, equality and fairness, but also fear that saying or doing something wrong along the way might happen? Because I think that's a, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously speaking from a white guy perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think there is a little bit of a hesitation there sometimes of, am I going to step in something that I don't intend to step in or say something wrong? And I think that fear can sometimes, you know, push back on someone wanting to make progress. You are absolutely right. And I say that all the time is that we really have to create a safe environment where people can have open, honest, candid discussions without feeling like if I say the wrong thing or if I ask a question that I'm going to be you know, jumped on for saying the wrong thing. Um, and we won't make any progress as long as we continue to have that type of situation. So my best advice is it's going to require both um, parties, if you will, to be a little bit more vulnerable and have a little bit more grace with one another. And I think the first place is just to start with some questions and saying, I'm seeking to understand because here's the reality. You as a white man can't possibly understand necessarily everything that you know, myself as an African-American female has gone through or will go through or how I feel. But if we, you and I sit down in an honest, authentic conversation and you ask, and I'm, I'm open to you asking me, what do you want to know? And then me being willing to share, um, I, I think that's where we can really make some progress. 
I, um, I'll i share this real quickly. I um, joined together with a, a gentleman um, and we created this nonprofit platform called Voice Up Now. And the whole premise of this nonprofit is to try to create these safe spaces for people to have these conversations with no judgments, you know, just I want to be able to voice my point of view and have you understand it. So I think more people seeking to understand versus being understood and we can have some positive dialogue and some positive solutions long term. Very, very refreshing to hear that and uh, uh, very much appreciate that perspective. I, I hope that people are listening. There you go. Um, Don, thank you for that and, and all the great insights you've shared with us today. Where can people find uh, you online and learn more about Heartbeat Leadership on the interwebs? So the place I recommend is One Stop Shop. Go to heartbeatleadershipbook.com. Again, that's heartbeatleadershipbook.com. Excellent. Well, Don, thank you again for your time today. We appreciate the insights. Hope everybody goes and gets the book. Uh, and uh, thanks thanks a lot for, for, uh, for all the insights you shared with us. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Have a good rest of the day. All right. You too. Don Kirk, ladies and gentlemen, how about that? Let's see. Maybe I got to hit another button. There we go. The buttons are working now. Uh, uh, awesome conversation and certainly very enlightening and uh, good to uh, good to have that perspective. Uh, hopefully uh, we can all take a little bit of that to heart and continue to improve uh, not just ourselves, but our businesses. Uh, looking over, Chip is apologizing for uh, having been, been behaving himself today. He's been multitasking. So, <laughs> well, thanks, Chip. I'm, I'm glad you decided to uh, multitask <laughs> during that conversation. I hope it was useful for you. Um, and uh, uh, Ian Moore has just jumped in, says excellent discussion. So, Ian, thank you for uh, stopping by. While we're on the topic, by the way, uh, of Chip uh, Griffin, let me let me uh, turn the attention on him a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, Chip Griffin, who graces us with his comment trolling over on YouTube of this very show every Tuesday, uh, he hosts a pretty damn good show himself for those of you who run agencies or consultancies. Chip is the head of the Small Agency Growth Alliance and his conversations with small agency owners and such is well worth your time. Um, I've, I've done up a short URL uh, to, to help point you uh, there so that you don't have to remember anything crazy, and I'll drop it in the uh, comments section. Jason.online slash Saga, S-A-G-A, which is Small Agency Growth Alliance, right? Uh, so I'm going to drop that in over there so everybody can see that. If you go to Jason.online slash saga that'll get you to chips youtube channel subscribe there so you don't miss those i've I, I returned the trolling favor last week with his chat with jenny dietrich and karen swim who are two of my favorite people and uh, chip does a really nice job there so go check that out at jason.online slash saga so there you go um okay what else do we have to oh yeah uh so uh, as you know everybody my uh, new book winfluence reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand is now three weeks away from hitting the shelves uh, here's what it'll look like there it is on the screen or is that over there there it is over there on the screen if you're watching uh, that's what the book looks like um, i don't have a copy of it in my hands yet but i'm sure they'll be here soon so i'm excited to actually have a physical copy to hold on to uh, you can pre-order the book now at winfluencebook.com that page on my site has links to entrepreneur barnes noble amazon 800 ceo reads or whatever they're called now um, i will give you a little hint though subscribers to my email newsletter, which you can subscribe on the site, get a special discount code for 20% off the book. So if you sign up for the Influence Monthly newsletter over at the site, the next newsletter hits next week and it'll have a 20% discount code in it. So you may want to do that. If you don't care about the 20% discount, then just go ahead and pre-order. I appreciate that too. Um, and you can buy from wherever you want. You can go on that winfluencebook.com, that address that you see on your screen. If you go there, uh, there's links to Entrepreneur's uh, Place where you would get the 20% discount if you have it, uh, but also Amazon and Barnes and Noble so you can buy where you like on that one. Um, once the book is live on February 23rd, I, I do believe it will have ebook and Kindle versions. The audio book will be available, I think, in a few more weeks after that. I just finished the narration of the audio book over the weekend. I did that my, my own self. Uh, they let me narrate my own book, which was kind of nice. So I don't think it's going to be ready on launch day. Uh, but stay tuned uh, for more of that. Um, Chip says, uh, how do we get autographed copies? 
well, you're going to have to come to Louisville or, <laughs> or you're going to have to uh, send it to me and I'll send it back. I guess, I don't know. I guess I could uh, sell them direct from my house and send them to people if you really wanted one. But uh, I don't think, I don't think I'm really set up to do that at any rate. Uh, I will sign whatever you guys want me to sign. If you send it to me, I'll give you my address and I'll sign it, send it back, I guess. Uh, I do want you, however, to mark your calendars for two fun book launch events coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, first, Entrepreneur is hosting an author reading on Wednesday, February 17th at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific time. That will feature me reading a chapter and a fireside chat. I'm literally going to put a fire in the fireplace and sit beside the fire and read from the book. Hopefully I have a physical copy by then. Um, but I'm going to do a reading for uh, entrepreneurs, uh, social channels and whatnot. That'll be a live stream reading for entrepreneur book uh, on Wednesday, February 17th at three Eastern noon Pacific. Uh, so I'm going to read a chapter and i uh, going to have a fireside chat and Q and a with my editor, Jen Dorsey. She will join me to talk about the book and ask some questions. So that will be fun. And then and then, and then on launch day, Tuesday, February 23rd at 1130. Wait for this, folks. This is going to be fun. Uh, check this out. I'm going to do uh, a live. I'm going to host the Winfluence book live talk show Tuesday, February 23rd from 1130 to one. Uh, it will be live on my social channels, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. It will be the most fun you've had in the middle of a Tuesday since the last time you were day drinking on a Tuesday, I suppose. Uh, guests that day will include David Meerman Scott, who, by the way, wrote the forward to the book. Uh, my uh, co-author for No Bullshit Social Media, Eric Deckers, will be here. Uh, Christy Samus from Clever. Uh, comedian Josh Sneed, my agent Gary Krebs is going to stop by to give me hell, Tabitha Hawkins from the Association of Influencers and Content Creators, and many more guests will stop by for a little show fun, quick hits and information goofiness. Uh, we're going to give away some signed books. So there you go, Chip. You can win a signed book if you're lucky. Uh, and that'll be sent directly from me if that's worth anything. And brace yourselves, a special appearance from mom. That's right. My mother will make an appearance on the big show. I'm sure you will all get a kick out of that. Uh, that's Tuesday, February 23rd, launch day, three weeks from today at 1130 a.m. Eastern, live on my social channels for that fiasco. Uh, I'm very excited to get the book in people's hands. Lots of fun uh, stuff coming out about the book and around the book. I would love for you to consider buying it. Again, you can pre-order at winfluencebook.com uh, or join the email list on the site there and get the 20% code off next week, hint, hint. Um, of course, one of the things that you have to do uh, after you get the book is go to Amazon uh, and review it because they, they make you they push the reviews because that helps Amazon. I don't know, elevates it in the search rankings and all that good stuff. So I will be asking you to review the book. If you do buy it and read it, I would appreciate you doing that. But it's all in good fun and support of the book, which I think will change the way people think about influencer marketing and so on. Um, uh, Izzy House has a question. Any audible book tips? So uh, Izzy, for, so I narrated the book this weekend. Um, and uh, the first thing you learn when you're trying to do an audio book as opposed to a podcast or something like that. Uh, and it's a lot longer than a 20 or 30 minute recording session because it's I think it's like eight or nine hours long total. Um, but uh, uh, the one thing I noticed is how non soundproof my house is. Um, and <laughs> I live on a four way stop and it's, you know, every two minutes you hear in the background because somebody's pulling out from the damn intersection. So that was frustrating. So I would, I would recommend if you have the opportunity, obviously to work in a recording studio and go into a soundproof room and all that good stuff. Great. Um, the way that you replicate that in your house from the people that I've talked to who have been trying to do like radio reporting and things like that is they actually go into their closets if their closets are big enough because all the clothing around them dulls the sound. Uh, when I recorded the book, I went to my daughter's bedroom because she has curtains and big sheets and stuff like that can that can sort of absorb the sound and there's not enough surfaces in there for sound to echo off of so it sounded a bit better but i still realized that the neighborhood noises came in so that was a little a little weird the other thing is i would tell you if you're ever doing an audiobook is um 
I would space it out and do a couple of chapters at a time and then take a break. Um, I did probably six chapters the first night that I tried recording. And by the end of it, my, my throat was raw. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to finish like the next day. So I had to stop and drink some tea and all that good stuff. Uh, so pace yourself. Don't try to do it all at once because it's a long, long recording process. Um, but yeah, the, the other tips really that they, that the recording people tell you is slow down and, uh, and just, you know, be at a nice, easy, comfortable pace because people have to be able to hear and process everything you're saying. And it's not like listening to a talk show. They're trying to listen to your book. So you have to kind of slow down on the 17th. Uh, when we do the re the live reading, um, I will exercise that that muscle of slowing down and narrating a book as opposed to just talking on a, on a talk show. So if you come to the book thing on the 17th uh, on the entrepreneur channels, I'm going to see if they'll let me uh, also simulcast that on mine. I should be able to do that, but I don't know. Sometimes I got to get permission, but we'll see. Uh, so thanks for that question. Um, and then uh, Chip Griffin says uh, audible books are better than inaudible books. Brilliant. Uh, and then unless it is a paper book, in which case I hope you don't hear it talking to you. Okay. Nice one, Chip. That's good. It's much cleaner than my trolling I did on his show, though, so I guess I'll forgive him for that. <laughs> okay. That's probably enough ridiculousness for this Tuesday morning because, you know, the one in three weeks is going to be pretty daggone ridiculous. We're going to have a regular show that day, by the way. Uh, Mitch Joel will be with us that morning. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and then uh, later that day on the 23rd, uh, we'll have the big talk show. And I'm going to like interview each of these people for like three or four or five minutes, ask them some questions, have fun. It's going to be lighthearted, goofy. It'll be a, a really entertaining way to uh, interrupt your uh, your Tuesday. So you're welcome for that ahead of time. Chip asks, will I wear a Mr. Rogers sweater when I do the public reading? No, but I'm considering buying a dinner jacket. Or a, or a smoking jacket and, uh, and have maybe even having a pipe. I definitely are going to have a bourbon. Uh, so that'll be, uh, that'll be fun. So good times coming up here on the, uh, on the show and elsewhere in February as the new book comes to life. I'm really excited to get that out there and let everybody uh, see the ideas. It's uh, we're reframing influence marketing or reframing influencer marketing um, and uh, wind influence is coming your way soon. Um, okay. If you are watching or listening to the show after the fact along the C-Suite network or via one of the video recordings online, remember we typically broadcast this podcast with a live stream. So join us live. You just follow me or Cornette on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, or look for Digging Deeper on YouTube and you'll get that handy uh, He's Live notification. Uh, my vision's going bad. I can't see the things I got to push here, uh, but you'll get that handy. He, he's live notification when we stream. That's normally at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday mornings. You can look for me online at Jason Falls. You can find Cornette online typically at Team Cornette. The Digging Deeper YouTube channel is at cornette.online slash dig deep. So you can subscribe to the YouTube channel there. Get notifications when we go live. For those of you watching on the live stream or video replay, you can subscribe to the audio podcast over at cornet.online slash digging deeper. That's where you can get the player and play right there in your browser or the place where you can hit the buttons to subscribe to the audio version of the show, wherever you get your podcasts. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, or wherever else. So cornet.online slash digging deeper for that. Next week on the show, ooh, got a treat for you. Paula DeZuti, everyone. Pixie Paula will be here. She is the creative force behind Loyal Choice Spirits, which is disrupting the spirits industry with celebrity and influencer-driven brands like Tyler Boone's Boone's Bourbon, hip-hop star Booze Badass's Boozy Juice, and Trina Braxton's Bar Chicks. She also heads up Striped Pig Distillery. Uh, so, but Paula is also, by the way, the uh, force behind Skirt Magazine and other projects as well. We're going to talk about her creativity, her branding, being the disruptor in the room, and does she actually get any sleep with all the stuff she's got going on? So, uh, Paula DeZuti, Pixie Paula, will be here 
next week. That'll be live on the interwebs next Tuesday, February 9th at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific. The episode recordings will be archived on the network where you watch or you can listen to the podcast recording via audio later that day. All right. I think this is the time on the show where the uh, traditional user error comes into play because Jason's got to figure out how to hit a bunch of buttons at once uh, and, and also read a script to make sure that the credits are appropriately given. So let's see if I can do this. There's one, and I think if I hit this other one, I'm in good shape. That's going to do it for this edition of Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. Oh, wrong. <laughs> Told you, user error. That's the that's the intro. I got to hit the outro. And we're we're live, folks. This is live. This is Jason screwing up the internet. Here's what we're doing today. Okay, I got to hit this one, <laughs> and then where's the outro? I think I lost it. Here we go. That'll do it for this edition of Digging Deeper. Make creativity your business advantage. If you like the episode, share it with a friend or colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornette Group. Find us online at teamcornet.com. Our executive producer is Christy Heiler. Creative director is Jason Majeski. Associate producers include John Herskin and Ashley Harris. The theme music is composed by Rex Banner. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thanks for joining us, folks. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs. <laughs>